Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Chats in the Blog Cabin. You know the show where I virtually invite people into the blog cabin to chat about life. And today we're talking with Sandra Harris. Sandra, as you can see by her background, for those that are watching, is she's the author of Goodbye Plastic, a survival guide for plastic free living. And we're also going to talk about your company as well. But Sandra, welcome to the show. Tell us a little bit about yourself before we get into talking about saying goodbye to plastic. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for your interest and for inviting me on the show. Um, when it comes to changing our own lives and the world, it all starts with curiosity and being interested. Mm -hmm. So for everyone who's tuned in out there, um, thanks for being interested and in learning about Say Goodbye to Plastic. Um, so as you know, Melissa, I just published a book, Say Goodbye to Plastic, a survival guide for plastic-free living. And it tells the story of my entrepreneurial journey um, as a plastic free um, entrepreneur who started a company in 2008 to bring to market the first line of food containers that are 100% plastic free. Um, so they're made from stainless steel and silicon. Um, and I wanted to bring these to the world um, for the safety of my own children and um, avoiding the toxins in plastics. And you might have heard of BPA mm -hmm. um, as well as to help save the planet. And so I've been on a journey since 2008 um, to educate, inspire, and then through the sale of our lunch boxes to empower people, especially at lunchtime, my company's name is Eco Lunchbox, um, and we sell Eco Lunchboxes, these plastic-free food containers, inspire people to take action and reduce their dependence on plastics, to say goodbye to unnecessary plastics. So that's just a little bit to get us started. So how did you first start? You already said you mentioned your children in it, but how did you first start getting interested in this and want to take the crusade to say goodbye to plastic? <laughs> Great question. Life can be so accidental. <laughs> um, I I never you know set out to be a plastic pollution activist um, nor an entrepreneur. Um, I didn't know anything about consumer products. Um, I had never worked in a business. I had been a journalist and I had worked as a humanitarian aid worker um, for a nonprofit organization in Vietnam. My husband is from Vietnam, um, but plastic kind of found me uh, when my son was in preschool. Um, and I remember uh, vividly what I call my plastic light bulb moment. I was going into the preschool to scoop him up. Where's my little sweetie? And they took me through the lunchroom um, on my way out to the sandbox to find my son. And as I walked through the lunch uh, room and try to imagine this, the trash cans were just exploding with single use plastics you know, the juice boxes, um, the cracker and the spready cheese sets, um, the squeezy yogurts, um, the, the Ziplocs, you know, the fill in the blank, the prepackaged snacks that, you know, are so convenient to just grab and go out of our pantries. Mm -hmm. Well, it was shocking to see that, and I was packing my lunch for my child um, in this way, and this was the early 2000s. It was shocking to see how each child's individual lunch rolled up into this mountain of trash in this little preschool that had probably 50 kids. And I was just like, whoa, what just happened here? I mean, it looked like a plastic bomb had gone off and it just captured my imagination so strongly. Um, and at the same time, I was starting to hear about bisphenol A. Um, mm -hmm. And I've always been very health conscious. In addition to being an environmentalist, I'm talking to you today from the San Francisco Bay Area, and, you know, we had the blessing of the Sierra Mountains and um, the Point Reyes Peninsula and mm -hmm. national parks and waterways. And I mean, I've just grown up out in the wilderness. But in addition to that, in order to be able to enjoy our planet, we have to be feeling well and we have to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And so I had tuned in to, you know, little quiet news about um, this A and this chemical that was commonly used in plastic um, being an endocrine disruptor. And I thought, you know, that sounds kind of suspicious. I'm not sure I want my kids to be exposed to a lot of that because we're probably going to be finding out more about this chemical in the years to come. And so how can I start packing their lunch without depending on plastic? And so that's how it all started, this accidental journey of uh, making, um, making plastic pollution uh, my life's work. 
you know, educating, inspiring, and empowering people to join me in saying goodbye to plastic. I actually love what you just said about how you started at home to try to make your kids' lunches plastic free. So that leads me to my next point is what can we do to make our lunches plastic free? Cause I know it's so easy to pick up that bag of chips that are individually wrapped and so easy to pick up that Ziploc bag or whatever. So tell us. A absolutely. Um, and the book is all about hitting the easy button. You know, when I started this journey back in 2003, and then I started my company in 2008, people thought I'd fallen off the back of a granola truck. They really thought I was overreacting. And, you know, how could it be that bad? You know, now, wouldn't our government protect us from this plastic? You know, surely recycling is taking care of plastic. You know, what's all the fuss about, Sandra? You're you're making a mountain out of a molehill is, you know, sort of the, the attitude I got, even from you know, really close friends and family. And so then I said, well, you know, what's the harm in <laughs> just at lunchtime, you know, or you can start really the journey to reduce your dependence on plastic um, in any part of your life. And I'll talk more about that and how the book is divided into chapters, which are rooms of the house. But my journey started at lunchtime. Um, and what that looks like for me is home cooked meals put into reusable food containers, which I send out in the morning. Um, now my kids are grown. So now they have the habit, right? Because I taught them they pack their own lunches, people would say, Oh, what cute bento boxes are you packing for your kids, Sandra? You know, because we've all seen on Instagram, these like adorable lunches. And I'm like, oh, that's not what I do. Basically, I trained my kid to pack their own lunch, you know, and now they're young adults, and they're packing food that they make at home in reusable containers and they have a reusable utensil and a reusable water bottle and reusable, you know, everything. And they take that to wherever they're going or we take it out into the, you know, uh, San Francisco Bay area, wilderness areas, or, you know, mm -hmm. traveling or uh, road tripping or whatever it is. And we just try to be mindful about saying no to all those prepackaged um, foods, which aren't good for our bodies either. So it's kind of a, you know, win in many ways um, mm -hmm. to switch to reusables. I love the fact that you talked about how you taught your children while they were young, how to pack their lunches so that they're not so quick to, oh, I'm going to go to the grocery store and buy a 12 pack full of chips or any you know, of that variety pack of chips that you just carry on. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, so I moved all of the reusable um, lunch containers and utensils and napkins and lunch bags um, down low when so that when they were in kindergarten or first grade, there was a drawer in the kitchen where they could pull the drawer out and they could pick their containers. Um, and I had them um, tell me what they wanted on the shopping list and they could, you know, pack nuts or other items that we would buy in bulk into little snack containers, you know, and they would decide what kind of a sandwich they wanted to pack and pretty much everything. I wanted to really empower them. That's a big thing with me. Um, and my rule was that they had to pack an entree, which had something with protein, mm -hmm. two sides, and one of the sides had to be a fruit or a vegetable. And those were the rules. It was just super simple. And do you have an entree and two sides with at least one vegetable or fruit? That would be my only question. I'm like, you're good to go. <laughs> Plus, I think it probably gave them more of a, it's empowered them, like you said earlier, but it gave them like some control over their lives. Or, or they were able to choose what they want instead of, you know, you see on TV all the time, mom picks up, mom packs peanut butter sandwiches or tuna fish sandwiches. The kids don't like it, but they got to go off to the school anyways and eat it. Exactly. And then you have the whole issue of food waste, you know, and food getting into our landfills and turning into methane, you know, and then you have the global, you know, crisis of, uh, you know, global warming coming from all that. So there's just waste doesn't do anything good for us. Right. And then in our household, my daughter wanted to have a lot of control over what she was eating from a very young age. And it seemed like I had a real knack for always picking something that she didn't like. <laughs> what was much harder was for me to say, well, what do you like? You can eat mm -hmm. what you like. And in the beginning, she would draw a real blank and it was really hard for her. It was easy to say no, but not mm -hmm. always so easy to generate 
you know, something that was an entree with two sides with at least one fruit and vegetable. So, you know, it took many years because lots of complaining, oh, there's nothing good to eat. Mm. <laughs> we never had a shortage of eco lunchbox containers, though. They never had to worry about, you know, having enough um, gear uh, mm -hmm. to eat with them um, as zero waste citizens. Um, so that was good. But in, in the book, which um, Say Goodbye to Plastic, A Survival Guide for Plastic Free Living, I've divided it up into chapters, which are rooms in the house. So for me, you know, entering the plastic free movement came very naturally at lunchtime. And that was the first step that I took to become really mindful of um, trying to use as little plastic as possible for the, our own health and the health of the planet. But, you know, a lot of people don't pack lunches, so mm -hmm. they could start in the bathroom, for example. Yeah. I mean, do we really need to get our toothpaste in plastic tubes? What about chewable tooth tabs? Do we really need to buy shampoo and plastic bottles? Um, no, we can buy uh, shampoo bars, right? Um, do we need to buy uh, razors for shaving um, that are made out of plastic? Or can we buy um, a razor that has a replaceable blade? You know, there's so many tricks and tips in the book so that people can just hit the go button on reducing their dependence um, on plastic without having to kind of um, generate all of the ideas themselves. You know, the same thing for, um, oh, let's say your office. Um, do you need to buy plastic pens that are disposable at end of life? Or can you buy a pen that's refillable and has a refillable mm -hmm. cartridge? You know, what are all of your office supplies made out of? You know, is it, are you using plastic folders and dividers, which go into the landfill and continue to create our dependency on plastic? Or are you using a recycled, recycled craft divider? Mm -hmm. um, and I have ten, tens of suggestions about your office, dining room, you know, overall kitchen, Do you, uh, a sponge, for example, those blue sponges that mm -hmm. we all use, that's landfill. You know, why not use um, something made out of a natural material that could be compost at the end of its life? whether it's a loofah or um, a cellulose uh, recycled cotton um, uh, kitchen wipe, or mm -hmm. uh, think about spatulas. Do you have to use plastic spatulas? What about bamboo? So encouraging people um, to think outside the box when it comes to the selection of our everyday um, objects and choose materials that can be biodegraded at end of life and are not going to just accumulate in our environment. I love that. And when we come back, I want to talk to you about some of the ways during the holiday that we can actually be more say goodbye to plastic during the holiday. Cause you know, the holidays are coming up. So, and we need to take a brief commercial break. Homeschooling just got easier and deliciously fun. My new book, Dishing Up Devotions, 36 Faith-Building Activities for Homeschooling Families is a delightful devotional the whole family will love. With encouragement for mom, fun family activities, conversation starters, and simple baking recipes. It's sure to feed your family's faith while building lasting memories in just minutes a week. And we are back talking with Sandra about saying goodbye to plastic. And one of the things that I think probably our landfills are going to be huge with right now is Christmas. You got wrapping paper, you have, you know, the take home, the leftover stuff, everything else. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, during the holidays, what we find is there's about 35% more trash generated than any other time of year. Um, and a lot of it is, you know, wrapping papers and decorations, um, as well as now with everyone relying so heavily on online shopping, those boxes and all that packing material, right? Um, mm -hmm. So again, you know, as we started our conversation, making the change all starts with being curious, being interested, you know, and accepting that things could be different. So let's say um, online shopping, um, for example, 
um, you know, why not um, seek out opportunities to shop online um, with companies that are shipping plastic free, like Eco Lunchbox? So mm-hmm. we ship using um, craft tape and cardboard boxes, 100% recyclable. We never put plastic into our shipments. Certainly, none of those peanuts. Styrofoam mm-hmm. is just the. Oh, I hate those. <laughs> I know, like no peanuts, please. <laughs> um, so on our website, we advertise, you know, that we, we ship everything uh, plastic free. And there are a lot of other eco-friendly websites that sell an assortment of items that have also started to adopt plastic free shopping, shipping. And um, we carbon offset all of our shipments as well so that they're climate neutral and other companies are doing this as well. Um, So you can start with something like that. You know, how are you acquiring your gifts and what choices are you making? Um, And if you need to buy from a website that doesn't offer the plastic free shipping, put a comment in the checkout box saying, you know, I would really prefer if you offered the plastic free shipping. Mm -hmm. It, It matters to me. Then it comes to the selection of the gifts. You know, what are you buying and promoting? Are you promoting, you know, a throwaway lifestyle with the gifts? you know, that you're buying or are you gifting experiences or are you gifting, um, you know, reusable uh, straws, lunch boxes, uh, mm-hmm. reusable fill in the blank to encourage those near and dear to you um, to give some serious thought to activating, you know, around reducing their dependence on plastic. And then there's the wrapping paper. If you can reuse, that's great. If you can wrap with a beautiful dishcloth, something that's actually going to be part of the gift, you know, that's a beautiful opportunity as well. So, you know, as we move into the holidays, um, we just need to kind of keep our heads up and our eyes open. And again and again, we're going to be faced with the choice. Do I go the the plastic throwaway route Mm -hmm. or do I pick another option? And it just first starts with curiosity and awareness. And let's just skip the self-blame, self-loathing, loathing mm-hmm. is too hard. I'm never going to be good enough and I'm not perfect. So why bother? We're going to skip that whole, that whole, you know, common conversation. And I talk about this in the book, you know, we have to love our planet and love ourselves. It's not easy right now to live mm-hmm. a plastic free lifestyle, but by taking a stand in our own lives and encouraging people near us. And then for those of us that get super revved up about it, talking to our school leaders, talking Mm -hmm. to our local politicians about, for example, banning styrofoam for restaurant takeout in your city. You know, just like years ago um, when the whole bring your own bag movement started, Mm -hmm. it was those early activists, you know, that first got us thinking about plastic pollution and empowering people, but we've moved so far beyond the bring your own bag, you know, mm-hmm. we can bring yeah. our own anything now, our own coffee cup, our own reusable container to buy uh, foods in bulk, you know, where you can pull them out of the, the cylindrical um, bulk dispensers mm-hmm. and buy them by weight. You know, that's a great way to reduce packaging. So I have a section in the book about kitchen um And one of the tips that I talk about is how to grocery shop plastic free and reduce dependence on plastic. So pretty much, you know, pick whatever your favorite room is in the house um, and start, you know, wherever it makes the most sense for you as an individual. There's no one right way to dial in um, plastic free habits. What I know is that right now there's about one garbage truck of plastic going into our ocean every single minute. And unless we all collectively change our habits um, as individuals, as well as activating our local politicians, our state politicians, and at the national level, um, there is some amazing work being done with the Break Free from Plastic Act, which will address plastic um, from its inception you know, the fracking that's taking place to get, you know, the petroleum out and all the um, manufacturing that happens to convert it into plastic and the huge carbon footprint that's created there. As individuals, we can't control some aspects, Mm -hmm. you know, of the supply chain, you know, and of, you know, the, of the presence everywhere of plastics. But 
we can take a stand in our own lives and make changes. We can communicate with our leaders and ripple out, right? So we're starting to really see some shifts, mm -hmm. you know, happening, which is super exciting. Um, and it's all started with individual action. You know, think local, act global, or what is it? Act, act local, think global, one of those two, but doing both, mm -hmm. both and not or. Yeah, I keep going back. You kept saying grocery, and I know one of the biggest things, the simplest things, but a lot, a lot of people think it's a hassle, is bringing your own bags to the grocery store. My daughter actually lives in California. She lives in the Pasadena area, but I'm in North Carolina. And growing up here it was always the plastic bag, never the paper bag. It was always the plastic bag. But now in California, she's like, she has to have these bags because they don't have the plastic bags. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, we've all had the moment where we're like, darn it, I forgot my bag. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it happens to the best of us. Um, and out here in California during the pandemic, there was a time when they weren't even allowing us to bring our own bag because they were worried about transmission of the virus mm -hmm. through the touching of the bags and they didn't want their baggers touching outside bags and this and that. Um, and so I wasn't allowed to bring in my own bag, but it was like so opposite my values to like accept a throwaway bag i had to put on my thinking cap and figure out like how do i get around you know the difficulty of bringing the bag and what i came up with and this works really well <laughs> for the times when you forget your bag is just to have them put your groceries back in your cart and then you push your cart out to your car mm -hmm. and you can bag your groceries into your bags in your trunk mm -hmm. right so and they totally don't care, you know, if you just say like, hey, you know, I forgot my bags, just check me out and put all my groceries in my cart and you just push it right out to your car and you're good to go. So there, there are lots of like, you know, easy tips like mm -hmm. that where, you know, you just don't have to stress. Yeah, but I think a lot of people, they get so overwhelmed with all the different possibilities of the way they can do the plastic, like you said, that they don't they don't take any action at all because they're like, it's not going to make a difference. I'm so overwhelmed. It's not going to make a difference. But if that one person just makes a difference, like you said, taking a bag to the grocery store. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't like to scare people with statistics, but um, just to th throw another perspective in that could be motivating for people who are kind of sitting on the fence, you know, wondering if it's worth all of the effort um, that, Scientists um, have recently done a study um, looking at the amount of plastic um, in our oceans in tons, you know, mm. in by weight, and comparing the weight of the presently existing uh, plastic in our oceans against the weight of fish in our oceans. And they are estimating that by 2050, if we don't turn this ship around and really dramatically reduce our plastic use that there will be more plastic than fish mm. in our oceans um so you know is, pla is plastic evil um one of the things i talk about in the book is you know the origins of plastic um and it was in the late 1800s it was plastic was first developed and you probably would be surprised to know that it was developed as an environmental move actually oh, wow. at the time uh, billiards you know pool shooting pool was like a super popular sport and what were the pool balls made out of elephant tusks mm -hmm. um and so there was a huge problem you know with um the killing of elephants for the making of these billiard balls and a scientist said you know we've got to save the elephants so what did he come up with the first iteration of plastic, you know, so it came from a place of, you know, wanting to actually help the environment. Um, and then over the years, you know, the formulations for plastics changed. And then it was during World War II that plastic became ubiquitous. And it's such a cheap, flexible, mm -hmm. easy to use material that we started the whole avalanche of, of plastic that has gotten us into this troublesome place where we are now. But I find it kind of, um, uh, curious that, you know, when it was first developed, you know, the intention was actually a good one, but um, we have over relied on this material and we're using it in so many ways when it, where it's just completely needless. Um, and people have, you know, 
fall, believe the false um, myth that recycling will save us. Um, mm -hmm. And in reality, only about 5% of plastic is ever recycled. We just don't have the systems and the technology and it's not cost effective to recycle plastic. So for anyone out there who has in the back of their mind, but I'm a good recycler, you mm -hmm. know, can't I just keep using my plastic? Because I'm really good about recycling it. Um, unfortunately, the answer is still is still no. And that's another you know, part of the recycling um, industry that the Break Free from Plastics national legislation is seeking to address to really fortify our recycling um, systems, which are quite broken. Wow, you've given us so much to think of, but I honestly, it's like, it is overwhelming, like you said, but I think you pretty much laid out in your book different types like you said you go room by room of ways that people can just simply change something i would have never thought about um shampoo bars honestly because you think of everything being in a bottle or a tube and then the toothpaste i did not even know they made that so that's I know, like why, why would you i mean you've always gotten along fine you know with the tubes and the bottles right Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, to be honest, these are innovations that have only come broadly to market in the last few years. You know, when I first started this journey, you know, about almost 20 years ago, um, if you wanted to have a shampoo bar, you had to make it yourself. And there mm -hmm. were like recipes online. But that's not what my book is about. I was, you know, really busy mom. And I know what that's like. And, you know, most families aren't going to have the time to make their own cleaning detergents, you know, that are non-toxic and not in plastic bottles are not going to have the time to make their own shampoo and their own toothpaste and all of that. So, but fortunately now the market is starting to catch up with the consumer's desire um, to have excellent products and also make good choices when it comes to saying goodbye to plastic. And so, yeah, all, all hundreds of suggestions like that. But once you hear it, it's kind of like a no brainer or in my book, say goodbye um, to plastic. And for people that are interested in spreading the word among their friends and family, we also have gift sets that include the book to educate and inspire and the products to empower um whoever that. it is you know that you're wanting to onboard into the plastic free uh lifestyle whether it's a youngster you know who's going to school you know or uh, an adult you know it all ages are interested i think in joining this movement yeah our time is almost up is there one last little nugget that you would like to leave people with you know just be be happy and joyful and make the best choices that you can and you know it's it's a difficult challenge and i realize that it's probably overwhelming and it might feel a little bit futile but every individual's action counts it really matters what we do as individuals and so i just appreciate uh, the opportunity to share and um to anyone who is listening. Um, good luck on your plastic free journey. I love that. And tell people where they can find you at. So um, ecolunchboxes.com is our website and there's more information about my story. We have lots of free information on our blog with all sorts of tips that you can search by keyword and we sell the book, Say Goodbye to Plastic, A Survival Guide for Plastic Free Living. And you also can get it available on Kindle as well. That's why I put the Amazon up. Yep. There's and you can also, want. Yeah. If you order from the website, um, you'll get a book signed by the author, which I think is kind of cool. Um, uh, and if you order from Amazon, you'll also can order the hard copy book. Uh, it won't be signed by the author and you can get the Kindle. For those that want to reduce the waste that way of, you know, you get a book and then you, what am I going to do with it after that? So that's another way. Absolutely. So, Sandra, I want to thank you for coming on and for sharing about the ways that we can um, just take one simple step to say goodbye to plastic, because I think it's very important because um, we want to leave a legacy for not only our children, but our grandchildren and our grandchildren's children, so forth and so on, so that the planet stays around for a long time. Well put. And thank you for the opportunity, Melissa. 
And guys, I will put in the show notes everywhere where you can find Sandra as well as her book. Um, like she said, if you order from her website, you get a signed copy from the author. But she also has it uh, bundled in with your lunch boxes, with the lunch boxes, so you can actually. It's a great Christmas gift for someone going to college or someone that works a lot. I know last year. I actually ordered my husband a lunchbox that he can plug into his cigarette ladder that heats his food up. Instead of taking like the plastic stuff, he does that because he's on the road a lot. So that's one of the things that he actually, his, one of his friends at work saw it and had me order one for him as well. So there you go. <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> So uh, once again, Sandra, thank you for coming on guys. We will see you on the next episode of chats in the blog cabin. Be blessed. Keep chatting and at least say goodbye to one plastic thing in your life. Have a great day. You guys.